Hey everyone, I'm building an entire first-person shooter game from scratch in the Gato engine and documenting the progress with these tutorials. In this video, we're creating a modular weapon system for my first-person shooter project. We'll be using scripts and custom resources so we can quickly save weapon attributes and swap between weapons efficiently. The basic FPS controller project from episode one is available for free on GitHub. And if you would like to download all of the source files, you can get access by joining my Patreon. Let's dive in. So what do I mean when I say modular? Well, when creating a game with a bunch of weapons, each of those weapons will likely behave differently. Physically, they use different meshes, materials are positioned differently, and they have different damage, attacks, etc. Could you create scenes and scripts for each one of those weapons separately? Absolutely, but imagine you wanted to change how damage works for your entire game. You don't want to sift through tons of individual weapon scripts and then make those adjustments. It would be a lot easier to make changes to one script that handles most of that functionality. So the goal here is to make a modular weapon system that handles things like weapon positioning, changing our mesh, damage, animations, and more. And we'll do it like this. First, we create one master weapon scene that will hold any and all nodes we need for our weapons. For now, we just have our mesh instance 3D node for our weapon mesh and our shadow duplicate. This scene will use our initiate weapon script that will handle any weapon logic and functionality we add in the future. Then we'll use what is called a custom resource. This is a script that will act like a blueprint or template for our weapons. Every unique weapon will use this custom resource as a template, where we define a series of variables we can edit for our weapons, like weapon name, position, rotation, mesh. Each weapon will have its own file that stores these values, and all we'll need to do to load that file is to load our weapon into our weapon scene. So the first thing we need to do is create our custom resource. To do that, we right click in our file system tab and create a new script. In our window, we select resource as our base type and click create. I'm saving mine in a meshes weapons folder and naming it weapons. Your weapon script will look like this. First, we set a class name of weapons and we extend the resource type. Then we create a series of export variables. Notice that none of these have any default values. This is because we will create unique resources for our weapons where we'll fill this data in later. I've created name for a unique weapon name reference, position and rotation for the weapon's default camera position, and mesh and shadow to set our model and turn shadow on or off. More variables can be added and we'll definitely do so in the future. With our script created, we can now create our first weapon resource for our crowbar. I've created a crowbar folder to house my mesh, material textures, and now we'll add a custom weapon resource. Right click the folder, create new resource, and search for our weapons resource type. It should pop up because we set our class name and our script. Create and save the resource, and it should open up in the inspector tab where you'll notice all of the export variables we set in our script. Now we can fill out this information for our crowbar weapon, save it, and make changes to it in the future. And if we add new variables to our weapon, say a damage field or a shooting sound, it will automatically be found in our weapons resources ready for new data. Pretty cool. I filled out my crowbar resource with the following information. Feel free to adjust the position and rotation yourself. But now that we have our weapon info, we need a way to load and use that information in our weapon scene. Back in our weapon scene, we're going to add a script to our parent called initiate weapon. This script will load our weapons resource we just created and use that data to load our weapon for our player, setting the mesh and positioning it according to the settings we set earlier on. Our script for now will be fairly simple, but in the future, we can extend this to include more of our weapon logic. First, we create an export variable, set to our weapons resource type so we can load and set our crowbar reference then two on ready variables for our weapon mesh and shadow nodes. I'll be using the unique name setting for both by right clicking the node and setting access to unique name to true. Then we can reference those nodes with the unique name tag here. Then we have a custom function called load weapon where we'll set our weapon mesh, position, rotation in degrees, and our shadow setting using the values of our loaded weapons resource. In this case, our crowbar. We run this function when the script readies in our ready function. 
Then when we run our level, our weapon script will load our crowbar settings and we'll see our crowbar. We now have a way to create new weapons and load those weapons into our player controller. So let's practice creating a new weapon and adjusting it in the editor. We'll create another weapons resource and move our crowbar to the left hand. So we'll call it crowbar left. Create the new resource and load it into our weapon scene in our player controller. You'll notice that even though we changed our resource, nothing happened. That's because our script to change our weapon setting only runs in game, but we can fix that. Go back to the initiate weapon script where we'll make a few changes. First, we'll add the tool line so that script also runs in the editor. You notice that the script icon is now a different color. Then we can run a set function in our variable. And you may be thinking, how can you run a function in a variable? Well, what we need to do is whenever our weapon type variable gets set, we of course set the value, but we also run our load weapon function so that it refreshes in the editor. And what we need is a colon right here. Now, when we change our export variable resource, it runs our function and the changes are expressed in the editor. Let's load our mesh into our left-handed crowbar resource, save it and reload it. You should now see a crowbar and to position it, go to the camera preview and use the transform to position the weapon, then transfer those settings to the custom resource and save it. But before we run our scene to test, we need to change one more thing in our initiate weapon script, or we're going to get an error. Because we're trying to run our function before our scene is ready, we don't have access to our nodes yet. So we need to run our function here only when we're in the editor. We can do that by using this if statement, which means any code within it will only run in the editor. Now, when we run our scene, our left crowbar loads. Finally, let's do one more proof of concept by adding a quick way to switch between these two weapons in game. To do that, I've added two temporary inputs using the one and two keys to swap between our crowbar and the left crowbar. To swap, all we need to do is change the weapon resource in our weapon scene. That's it. Remember, we run our load weapon function whenever we set our variable. I've added these lines to my weapon script for now, just as a test. Now, when I run my level, I can swap between the two weapons using one or two. And this works because we've set up a modular weapon system that uses custom resources to drive the weapon information we need. All right, guys, if this tutorial was helpful, consider a like and subscribe to the channel as we're gonna be covering a lot more. Thanks to all of my patrons who keep this series going. You too can get access to the project source files by joining my Patreon. You can download everything there and you'll also get early access to my videos and sneak peeks at future tutorials. Thanks for watching and as always, keep creating.